The Who by Numbers is the seventh studio album by English rock band The Who, released on October 3, 1975 in the United Kingdom through Polydor Records, and on October 6, 1975 in the United States by MCA Records. It was named the tenth best album of the year in the Village Voice Paz and Jock Critics poll. Background Pete Townshend has claimed that the band recorded practically every song he had written for The Who by Numbers, partially due to a writer's block that he was experiencing at the time. The songs on the album were, for the most part, more introspective and personal than many other songs that the band had released. Townshend had his 30th birthday in May 1975 and was struggling with the idea of being too old to play rock and roll and that the band were losing their relevance. He began to feel disenchanted with the music industry, a feeling that he carried into his songs. The songs were written with me stoned out of my brain in my living room, crying my eyes out. Detached from my own work and from the whole project. I felt empty. After concluding the album tour for Quadrophenia in June 1974, The Who took an extended hiatus and did not perform live for more than a year. John in Twistle kept himself occupied by playing solo gigs. In addition, the band spent this time filming a movie based on the Tommy Rock opera. Recording, the sessions for The Who by Numbers began in April 1975 and lasted through early June. The album was released in October and the band began touring it, which spanned some 70 concerts before concluding in the fall of 1976. For the album's recording, the band recruited producer Glyn Johns. The band had previously worked with Johns during the 1971 album Who's Next. Compared to previous Who albums, the Who by Numbers took an unusually long time to complete and was marred by numerous breaks and interruptions due to the band members' growing boredom and lack of interest. As an illustration of the band's lack of confidence in the material, only four of the ten songs on the Who by Numbers were performed live two of which became concert staples. I felt partly responsible because the Who recording schedule had, as usual, dragged on and on, sweeping all individuals and their needs aside. Glynn worked harder on the Who by numbers than I've ever seen him. He had to, not because the tracks were weak or the music poor but because the group was so useless. We played cricket between takes or went to the pub. I personally had never done that before. I felt detached from my own songs, from the whole record. Recording the album seemed to take me nowhere. Roger, Daltrey was angry with the world at the time. Keith, Moon seemed as impetuous as ever, on the wagon one minute, off the next. John, in Twistle was obviously gathering strength throughout the whole period. The great thing about it was he seemed to know we were going to need him more than ever before in the coming year. Album cover the album cover was drawn by John in Twistle. In 1996, when asked about the cover, he replied, The first, piece of artwork release, D, is the Who by Numbers cover, which I never got paid for, so now I'm going to get paid. We were taking it in turns to do the covers. It was Pete's turn before me and we did the Quadrophenia cover, which cost about the same as a small house back then, about £16,000. My cover cost £32. Release and reception, The Who by Numbers peaked at the number 7 on the UK album chart and number 8 on the Billboard 200 album chart in the US. Squeezebox was also a top 20 hit in both Britain and America, although the US follow-up, Slip Kid, failed to chart. The Rolling Stone review of The Who by Numbers stated, they may have made their greatest album in the face of their personal problems but only time will tell. In an interview from 30 Years of Maximum R&B, Townshend declared Dreaming from the Waste, and Sister Disco was his least favorite songs to play on stage. In contrast, in Twistle declared in the same series of interviews that Dreaming from the Waste was one of his favorite songs to perform live. Remasters and reissues, the 1996 remaster was remixed by John Astley. On the remaster, the end of They Are All In Love is cross-faded with blue, red and grey. The original album did not feature this crossfade. On December 24, 2011 the album was remastered and reissued in Japan using the original mix. The live bonus tracks from the previous edition were included on the reissue. The packaging replicated the original vinyl release of the album. Track Listing
All songs written by Pete Townshend, except where noted. Sales chart performance, album, singles. Sales certifications. Personnel, The Who, Roger Daltrey a Euro-led vocals, percussion, Pete Townshend a Euro guitars, keyboards, Herculeal, accordion, banjo, percussion, backing vocals, lead vocals on However Much I Booze, and Blue, Red and Grey, John in Twistle a Euro bass guitar, brass, backing vocals, joint lead vocal on Success Story, album cover art, Keith Moon a Euro drums, percussion, additional musicians, Nicky Hopkins a Euro piano on Slip Kid, Imagine a Man, Success Story, They Are All in Love, How Many Friends, and in a hand or a face, production, John Astley a Euro remixing, Chris Charlesworth a Euro executive producer, Bill Kerbishley a Euro executive producer, Richard Evans a Euro remaster album art direction, design, Glenn Johns a Euro production, Doug Sachs, mastering, Bob Ludwig a Euro remastering, Robert Rosenberg a Euro executive producer, John Swenson a Euro liner notes, Chris Walter a Euro photography. References External links Guitar Tablature